Ruben, I just watched the video. Pretty good uh, information you're spilling out there that you must have learned off the internet. But uh, uh, you talking about the combination valve, you're partly right on what it does. I'll go over what it does in a second. But I saw Hot Rod Paul listed manual proportioning valves. This is a manual proportioning valve. And I'm pissed that you're making me show a dirty engine. If you look, I need a, need a pointer of some sort. Hold on a second. Look at this, what a mess you got me. It's right here. Down here. The second one back here. That's a manual proportioning valve. That's line lock. Like a dope, when I built the car, I put it there so it had plenty of room until everything went together. But that takes care of half of the valve you have, only half. The combination valve is a proportioning valve. With Ziggy's right, you want to limit the rear brakes, period. I don't know, I'm not sure if it's 90%. Uh, I've played with that valve a bunch, obviously it's a pain in the ass to get to. But uh, that was years ago. You base that on, uh, like you said, how much weight is in the front of your car, how wide your back tires are, how you're driving, blah, 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 blah. Because if you put too much brake into the back, you're right, the rear wheels are going to lock, you're going to skid, it's going to be all sorts of havoc. Okay? What you have is a combination valve. It's a mixture of that to limit the brakes to the rear, because you can get as much as 15 to 1,600 pounds of braking pressure out of the mass cylinder. Okay, so you're going to limit it down. I'm not really sure what the, what the magic number is, what they determine, whether it's two, three, five hundred. Okay, I know it's greatly reduced because, like I said, drum brakes do bite pretty hard and they are self energizing. Um, but you also have a spool valve in there. If you give me a second, I'm going to draw it out. Okay, here's my illustration. <clears throat> if you want better illustrations than this, you better get it. You got to watch PBS. Here's your master cylinder again. I'm going to keep that basic. We know how it works. Okay, so here's the inside of the car for argument sake. And your pistons are pushing. You're going to send fluid through the combination valve or through the spool valve right to your rear brakes. Send it through. This is a piece of rod, Ruben. That's the best way I could describe it. With a groove machined in it. So the fluid flows right past it. Spring on each side. There is one more very thin groove in the center. I didn't draw it. Okay, and there's your switch. If you lose brakes on half the side, you only push it on this side, okay, the fluid pressure is going to push on these lands and move the valve this way. And then the solid part is going to block off the other half of your master cylinder. At the same time, well, this one will still flow because of the size of the valve, uh, the land in it, the groove. At the same time, it's going to push this switch. It's not going to push it. It's going to go over, and the switch is going to push in, and it's going to send the ground to your light and then to your positive. That's why you keep saying you don't have the light on. If this thing gets pushed over, now some cars do not have the springs. Okay, which ones they are, I'm not sure. And as soon as you break something free and go to bleed it, the valve will slide over and stay there. Okay, and I think if I'm not mistaken, there's a pinhole on either end, and you got to go back there and you got to center it, and you center it until the light goes off. Some cars have the springs. Like my Ramblers have springs, that I know. I also had a problem with the switch once. I actually had mine activate once, and it sheared <laughs> and damaged the switch. So that was great. Um, but that's something you have to look into. There are a lot of cars that if you bleed them or if you bleed them, too fast, this will slide over. Okay, and I'm trying, I'm not sure who said it, but somebody said it, and I've been trying to relay this for 30 years. When you bleed brakes, you do not pump them up. You you put your foot there and you allow the fluid to come out. And there's one major reason you do it, because if you have any kind of air and you start pumping them, your big air bubbles become little air bubbles, and little air bubbles are hard to get out. Okay, so you do not pump them, and everybody I've worked with since I started working pumps them. And I have to specify before we start, don't pump them, just push it down once. And you never, on an old car, or an older car, I don't care 
if it's five years old or 50 years old, you never let the brake pedal go to the floor. Because if it's a car that the brakes have only gone down an inch, and now you bring them down two inches, you're dragging those cup seals that we talked about in the last video right through all the shit that's built up inside of the master cylinder. Because those cup seals slowly shred as they go across the compensation port as time goes on. And then you drag it across all the stuff that built up and then you put little scratches in the cup seal and then it'll hold pressure. The reason they use a cup seal is a cup seal requires very little preload or against the walls. As soon as you put pressure on them they expand. Okay, like when you put your head in a hat and it expands. And then nothing can get by it. When they get old and they get stiff is when the fluid bleeds by. Or if you're suspecting a massive cylinder, the object is you get in the car and you move it to the floor very slow. And if the seals are getting stiff, you can actually bypass it. And next thing you know, you're touching the floor. So, on the other hand, you can wail the brakes really hard and the cup seals will expand. So, you're right. you got to put this back in the car. you got to put the switch on. If none of that system works, Ruben, that wire to the inside your car, ground it. Make sure the light works. So if the light doesn't work, then you can sit here from here to ground with an ohmmeter. Okay? Make sure this valve is mid-seated. Because if it isn't, you'll only get fluid out one side. And you'll get fluid out of the side that did not have the brake in the line. And since you putzed with the front brakes a lot, it's probably mid-seated to block off the front brakes when not no longer mid-seated. A proportion of the valve, on the other hand, is just like on my car over here. And my car here is just a predetermined restriction in so many words. It only it's a it's a regulator, <clears throat> like on your compressor, in so many words. So with that, I think we need a cold start. I've talked long.